Al Jazeera Podcasts. Today, what started out as peaceful protests in Kenya turned deadly. And uh, what appears to have been live gunfire uh, killing uh, apparently at least one people and several others who appear to have been injured with gunshot wounds. What ignited these protests? And why are young people leading the movement? I'm Malika Bilal, and this is The Take. Malcolm Webb, who's now in Nairobi. Malcolm, I know that you've managed to get to us on camera. Just explain to us where you are and what you're seeing right now. So we're just outside uh, the Parliament building in central Nairobi. It's there, but first... Al Jazeera correspondent Malcolm Webb has been covering the protests in Kenya for about a week. The demonstrators were protesting against a finance bill that would increase taxes. And for the most part, things have been peaceful. The demonstrators here are now chanting. We've got a banner there that says, enough is enough. Uh, And this is about... uh, But on this Tuesday, uh, events took a turn. Just over there, just outside Parliament, was a body of a young man who was carrying a Kenyan flag. Uh, He had a bullet hole right in the centre of his forehead. Uh, His brains were spilled on the pavement. Uh, And this is one of a number of... uh, Later that day, at least five people had been shot dead by police, with many more injured. There's also many plainclothes security operatives around carrying guns, and uh, we saw some of them earlier shooting into the crowds. Al Jazeera's Zain Basrabi was also there. 200 meters away from Nairobi's parliament building. And when the police started using live fire ammunition, when reports of live fire being used and people dying began to come into the crowds, the crowds converged. Now, where we are in Nairobi... So we got him on the line to hear about what else happened that day. Well, it's just uh, gone Tuesday evening where I am. It's about close to 7 p.m., 6.40 p.m. We were at the protests uh, as they began early this morning. Thank you for coming back on. It's really good to have you on the take again. This is obviously a quickly unfolding story, but we are speaking on Tuesday, June 25th, as things have escalated rapidly. Hundreds of protesters entering the Kenyan parliament, parts of that building on fire, police using live ammunition against protesters, and protesters reportedly killed. What have you seen and heard today? The first hour or so, it was a few dozen people scattered here and there, small groups that began converging on downtown Nairobi. It went from just a few dozen people to a few hundred to a few thousand. And by the end of the day, there were tens of thousands of people. Even now, you can hear them. We can hear them from the window of our offices all across downtown Nairobi, in every street, in every alley, clashing with the police. People felt provoked by the police presence there, which was very heavy. They started using gas canisters and and, and, and tear gas and sound grenades almost immediately. People were bringing us bullet casings, showing us that the police were using live ammunition, Mm. that they had seen people get shot in the belly and the torso. And in the hours that followed, we have confirmed a number of deaths. Um, It started with two, then reports of five. And really, within hours of parliament voting for this tax bill, voting... In the second round, the parliament compound was stormed. Protesters broke through police cordons around the parliament and entered the building. Part of the site was then set on fire. We even heard reports of lawmakers and politicians having to be evacuated, some of them seeking shelter in in the basement of the parliament building. And then we started seeing plumes of smoke rising from, from that area. Some of them were tire fires, but there were confirmed reports that parts of the government buildings, parts of parliament, were indeed set on fire. Wow. Okay, so you mentioned the tax bill. Let's talk about how this all got started. This began seven days ago today, and you mentioned the day of rage. What are protesters angry about? Well, this is the second year in a row that there is a considerable tax hike 
on people's income and on their expenditure. And basically everything that they're taxing from startups in social media to sanitary pads for women mm -hmm. to a road tax on drivers, uh, commercial or private, it, these taxes are so invasive. People here feel it in their daily lives. Mm. Everything they do, every step they take, they feel that the government is picking their pockets. And the anger we're seeing now isn't just from this tax bill, from the events of this week, from the events of this year, or even the last two years. The people we speak to say that they are angry because this has been going on for generations, um, literally since the country gained independence. Our lives are tough. People are struggling. People don't have places to stay. People don't have meals to eat. Families, fathers can't food, put food on their table. We need change in this country. And this finance bill is not going to bring that change. We don't want to carry debt. We want to change this. We want to change this country. We want you as the government to be accountable. They say that they have seen one government after another that has been autocratic, that has ruled through intimidation, threats, that has basically governed through a culture of fear. And when we speak to protesters, most of them are in their teens, in their 20s, in the early 30s, they do not want to see a future with the same systemic mismanagement of, of government resources, the same blatant corruption at every level of government, municipal, local, national. The bribe taking, the nepotism is so profound and so in your face that people say they just can't take it anymore. Right now we're not paying taxes, but we're fighting for our future. So we're young now, but that's what we need. We need young people to fight for our future rights, our future Kenya, and to just overthrow this silly government, man. We're tired, we're tired. And, um, you know, we spoke to one young man here, a college student, and he says, I'm graduating and there is no way I'm going to have a job. And they say that that is one reason that they will protest as long as they can, because they have no work to go back to. And after a very heated moment with some protesters who were, they just all want to talk to you. They just want someone to listen to why they're angry. Mm -hmm. One kid just walked up to me and said, listen, at the end of the day, all we want is freedom. And then he walked away. Oh. And really that's at the core of what's happening here. They want the freedom to be able to live better, to be able to make choices to affect their lives in, in a reasonable way. The one thing they keep saying is, no matter what decisions lawmakers make, no matter what decisions corrupt leaders make, who aren't fit to be in the jobs that they're in, whatever happens in the halls of power, they will decide the future, even if that means deciding it on the streets, even if that means setting the parliament on fire, which is what we're seeing happening now. As you're talking, Zane, I'm hearing the sounds in the background that you mentioned, the protesters outside your window. You're at the Al Jazeera Bureau. Describe for me where in Nairobi this is all happening. We are very close to where all this is happening. But it's not just happening in one place. There are pockets of these demonstrations, hundreds of people in downtown, right around Parliament, then hundreds more in another neighborhood, hundreds more in another area. Every access point in and out of the city seems to have young people there these are young people that just want to be out there and be a part of this. And when they talked about shutting down the country, if their demands weren't met, the city is effectively shut down, shops are closed. But the shopkeepers earlier this morning were handing out water, were clearly showing support for these young protesters. We spoke to a mother who was out there in the protest movement with her kids saying the reason she was there is because she sees no future for her children and she understands their anger. We've spoken to other parents who were trying to call their kids to see if they were okay, unable to get through. So there's a mix of concern and worry and then active support. But even the older generation, you know, the parents of these young people understand why they're angry and really do support it. You know, they don't want to see anyone else die, but they also understand why the youth are out on the street and why they're so angry at a government that has just left them behind. After the break... Is this a turning point for Kenya? So, Zane, based on your description, I understand that your morning began slow, surrounded by peaceful protests and demonstrators breaking out in song. This has largely been, as you said, a youth-led movement with an online component. I've seen hashtags like Reject Finance Bill 2024 for days now. 
What made it take a turn? Well, I think observably there's two things that happened. The police, the, you know, started detaining a lot of influencers. They started detaining people who were prominent in the social media campaigns, prominent activists the night before, uh, and even in the days leading up to today. So I think those detentions, those arrests fueled a lot of anger. You know, the, the protesters felt that what the government was doing was so audacious. Some people, they still haven't, you know, heard about their whereabouts. Similarly, provocations by the police on ground level with the use of tear gas and the heavy police presence, armored vehicles. But I think the other thing that, that led people to simply ratchet up their street demonstrations was the, the vote going forward. You know, the question was, will these protests change the minds of people in power? And I think everybody knew that the bill was going to pass. It was a foregone conclusion. But when it did, within hours, you saw the parliament compound raided. And then suddenly things got much more violent. And I think it was that, you know, feeling like no matter how peaceful they were, they weren't being heard, they were being ignored. And you could feel the anger bubbling in the air. And the reason that happened is word of uh, protesters being shot and killed began to move through the crowd. And when people realized that live fire was being used and people were dying, then the anger just went up. And um, governments in Kenya, especially this one, have in the past used harsh tactics to put protests down, and they have largely worked. But this is a very different protest movement. This is uncharted territory for Kenya. You've given us several of the underlying reasonings there and, and really the historic backdrop, but why does the government say it's raising taxes? Well, the government says they need to meet a shortfall that they they need to raise funds to be able to pay off what has been crippling debt. You know, big picture is that they owe a lot of money and they need to pay off debt. Now, what the protesters are saying is that the government doesn't deserve more money. They've mismanaged for so long. They continue to pass the burden of their mistakes onto the people. And what they need to be doing is taking pay cuts themselves. So instead of making the people suffer, why don't you guys take a couple of pay cuts? Why don't you step down from office? If you can't fix the problem, let us look at it and let us try to fix it. And they want an end to the status quo. You know, corruption, mismanagement, systemic cronyism, and um, it's gone unchecked for so long, and so they are deciding to check it. What you are seeing here, the residents of Mombasa County have decided that Ruto must go. But this is a very different protest movement. This is uncharted territory for Kenya. There's no political parties involved. There isn't an opposition group and a government. There is no back and forth along these, you know, there's not a two-lane highway. This is impromptu. This is spontaneous. This is without any political leaders. And this is organic and in many ways much more authentic than what we've seen in the past because it is pure anger by people that are not protesting or converging along traditionally ethnic lines or political lines. One of the things we've seen among protesters' calls is for President William Ruto to step down. Ruto, who campaigned on a platform of championing the poor. Does this feel like a turning point in Kenyan politics? I mean, that is what everybody is hoping for and or fearing, depending on where you're looking at this from. Nothing like this has ever happened, at least not in recent memory, in Kenyan politics. You know, it's a country of over 50 million people. The vast number of them are the youth, are young people who are looking down the barrel of a future where they are being saddled with crippling debt. And they do not want to go down that road, at least not with the current car and driver. So is this a turning point in terms of shifting politics so drastically that we see a new government take hold? That's a question mark, because for the powerful to remain in power is as easy as calling in the military, you know, becoming more violent. But there have been calls for talks for days and weeks that haven't really taken hold. And what the protesters are promising is that they will sustain. And they are young, they're angry, determined. And so, you know, if there is ever going to be a moment of change, this feels like that moment. And that's The Take. 
This episode was produced by Tamara Kandakar and Chloe K. Lee, with Noor Wazwaz, Doha Mossad, Mohammed Zain Shafi Khan, Veronique Ishaya, and me, Malika Bilal. It was edited by Amy Walters. Our sound designer is Alex Roldan. Alexandra Locke is the Takes executive producer. And Nate Alvarez is Al Jazeera's head of audio. We'll be back tomorrow.